Poverty and inequality are universal. They undermine every society, everywhere. But poverty is not natural. It is man-made, so poverty is not inevitable. It's an area where the world has made huge progress in the past few decades. Just 30 years ago, there were 1.9 billion people living in extreme poverty, but that number has been transformed. In 2015, it fell to 734 million people. That's over a billion people lifted out of poverty. But still, almost 10% of the human race is living unbelievably harsh lives. This is largely determined by their circumstances at birth, and these high levels of inequality work against better opportunities for all. Opportunities that could change the world. I want to tell you a story about 1999. I used to teach people how to write computer programs. And I had a very, you know, plush office and everything. And just outside of these offices, there was this large, sprawling, urban slum full of children. So one day I tried an experiment. I made an opening in the boundary wall that separated my offices from the slum. And then I fixed a computer so that from the other side of the wall, you could see the computer and a touchpad. On the first day, we saw this eight-year-old boy teaching a six-year-old girl how to surf. How on earth did he figure that out? How did he know what the computer was doing? Three months after I had first put their computer in the wall, the children said they wanted a faster processor and a better mouse. I asked them, how on earth do you know these words? Where did you learn this from? And they said, well, you, you've left a machine here that speaks only in English, so we had no option but to learn the language. Easy, isn't it? I repeated the hole-in-the-wall experiment for five years across the length and breadth of India in a village 300 miles away from Delhi. One girl is explaining to the other girl what a neuron is. They're just 12 years old. Wow. We have hope. We have an enormous potential of what children can achieve together if we let them. <laughs>